Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new Motion Trail feature that provides assistance with motion adjustments and refinements by giving you a visual reference for movement trajectories. Motion Trail updates in real time and allows you to see bone position changes in 3D space as well as speed of movement. Let's dig right into it and take a look at how to adjust the motion using this new tool. You can enable Motion Trail via the Edit Motion Layer tool by clicking the icon at the top. which will bring up a list of bones with checkboxes, which you can enable from there. Or also by right-clicking on the specific bone in the viewport and selecting Show Trails, then the trail for the bones you want to see, each with its own color. In the Motion Trail settings, you can also specify the color settings to contrast more with your background, and these will be saved with your project. Be aware that with AccuPose, there are no control points for the upper arms, spine, or thighs. Along each motion trail path, you'll see a number of markers that correspond to the progression of frames, with larger markers representing a keyframe that has been added to that specific bone. This makes it easy to visualize the movement speed of the specific body parts in the viewport. You can also determine whether or not you want the actual keyframe number listed in the viewport as well, beside its marker with the Label Keyframes checkbox. The Label Tween Frames checkbox will show a label for every frame, regardless if it contains a key or not. You also have the option to put a higher value beside Plot Tween Frames, which will only display the frame number for the increment that you specify. You can also right-click on any marker in the motion path for easy access to the transition curve presets. If we select an Ease Out preset, we will see how the motion trail adjusts between those two keyframes, changing the trajectory of the foot. We can exaggerate that by increasing the strength value further, and then apply an Ease In preset to the next keyframe. If we want to increase the number of frames displayed in our motion trail, we can increase the value of the frame range, or decrease it if it becomes too complex on screen. In the viewport, you can control select multiple control points to simultaneously display their motion paths, and double click any of the keyframes along the path to immediately jump to that keyframe. We can then bring the heels back a bit to give the impression of a more dynamic jumping trajectory, and continue to do the same for the fists a few frames later. You can see how a visual representation of the motion trajectory in the viewport can be very helpful for these edits. You also have the option to clear all selected in your motion trail options as well. Here's a quick before and after of those simple edits that we made.
If you have your timeline open and select a control point from the viewport, the corresponding tracks will also open up in the timeline and focus on that specific keyframe. Here we can multi-select these keyframes for the arm markers and offset them slightly from the torso to prevent the motion from looking too uniform and robotic. We can then clear the motion trails for the arms and focus on the feet, following a similar process. Again, right-clicking on the desired keyframe in the motion trail is a great way to jump there in the timeline. Now we can see that the leg offset at the peak of the jump looks a lot more organic. Aside from the transition curve presets, you can also easily access the curve editor itself by right clicking on the desired keyframe in your motion trail. In this case, we want to emphasize the speed of the base hip bone, which is the parent bone for all of the others. You'll find this under FK Transformations, but again, an easier way is often to just select it from your motion trail. You'll see the Z position curve is almost identical to what we see in our motion trail, just mirrored. We can use the break option to split the existing curve, allowing us to generate more energy for the takeoff and landing, with a sharper change in transform position. At the peak of the jump, we can then select that key in the curve editor, apply an auto preset, and then use the handles of that keyframe to extend the length of the hip bone's position at the peak, essentially giving us a longer time in the air before plummeting to the ground. Motion trails are also very useful for checking the orientation of your motion. Here we can see that there is a slight offset in the rotate Z position. By moving this keyframe up and down in the curve editor, we can see how our character rotates and how the motion trail subsequently adjusts. By combining motion trails with powerful existing motion editing tools in iClone, you can not only visualize your refinements better, but also work a lot faster at getting the results that you want. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.